Hiya, welcome to another video. This is a baby pink redesign with glitter encapsulation and nail stamping using MoYu London. I have already filed off the previous design and then I have put on the clear base, just filled in where it had grown out. And then the first thing that I'm doing, and I'm gonna do this on both hands, is I'm gonna do the reverse method for the smile lines. And I'm gonna do them first because I need to leave them to set before I refine them with my file. So the reverse method is where you place the extended nail bed before you place the color of the tip or the white. If you were doing French, it would be white. So I start with the color that I've chosen and this is Glitter Bell's Sugared Almond. I place the bead and sometimes you use two beads for this, but this client has really tiny fingers and so I can get away with one bead on the nail. However, on the next nail, I kind of bodged it by accident and I've used about three beads to get it to look neat. So I've placed on the acrylic and I have shaped it with my brush as much as I can so that it is nicely shaped and I'm going to get it as close to the finished shape as possible as I want to just use my file to refine not to create the shape and here's where I bodged it I put the acrylic on way too wet and uh, it did not go the shape that I wanted it to be so I just spent about five minutes getting it to the right shape this client has really really small nails so usually I actually use a size um, four brush or you could use a size five but this is not this is a size 10 and it's a little bit big which is why the bead of acrylic is too big so I'm gonna apply more acrylic to get it to be as neatly shaped as possible and then I'm going to file off the bulk so at this point I'm actually like getting really cross with myself because I can't work out why the acrylic isn't doing what I want it to do and I can tell that I'm using it too wet but usually it's not it's not too much of a problem until I realised that I was using too big of a brush when I was doing the next index finger. So I'm coming onto the other nail now and I am going to create that smile line on this hand. And you can see it's going a little bit better than the other one, but not by much. My client's index fingers have quite straight um, cuticle shapes, so I find it quite difficult to give a balanced look. This finger in particular, the the eponychium, it, it's sort of diagonal. If you can see that shape that it's kind of slants up towards a body. And um, I find it quite difficult to make that cuticle area balanced because if I was to put the bead of acrylic and shape it the way that the, her cuticle is, it would actually make the nail look completely lopsided. So it's a bit of a labor of love so now i figured out what was wrong <laughs> that i was using too big of a brush for my skill set and um i've come in with my size four and it goes a lot better i'm going to use two beads now like i would on other nails i'm going to create the extended nail bed part first and then i'm going to come in and do the cuticle area afterwards Now I'm going to do the pink and this is Glam and Glitz Simply Stella. This nail, when I was debulking and getting rid of the previous design, I caught it with the edge of the file. So I took off some of the shape. So I'm actually recreating the edge of the nail with Simply Stella. So I've placed my bead on and I'm loosely making it to shape and I'm doing the cuticle area 
while the base part cures a little bit more and then once it's not so runny I'm going to check it against the nail on the other hand check that it's the right length and then I'm going to shape it so here's where I'm checking and I think yeah that's the right length and then I'm just going to spend some time now pushing it with my brush getting it into loosely the almondy stilettoy shape that I want and then when it's all set I'm going to get it to shape before I put the bit of glitter swirly bit over the top and to do that I'm going to use my file Now it's time for the thumb and this is going to be an ombre nail i'm going to use simply stella again which by the way is a glow powder it glows blue it's quite nice but um i forgot to get a video of it again uh, because i forgot so um yeah so i'm just creating the base color for the ombre i'm gonna leave that to set whilst i move on to do the on the other thumb and do the other hand when it's set I'm then going to put sugar diamond over the top. Just making sure that I've got a nice blend of that colour. So now I'm coming on to filing my smile line. So the way I work, I sort of rock it as if I was doing an almond shape on the nail. Somebody once told me that a good way to think about it is to create an egg shape. And I use that thought when I'm doing the shape when I'm doing the filing just sort of helps me to keep it balanced the shape even I guess so I don't know about you but sometimes I struggle to get it nice and even up the nail so one thing that I found is turning my clients hand over bending the fingers that you're not filing towards the palm and having the finger that you're filing pointing towards the ceiling and working on it facing you if that makes sense you've just seen there anyway I'm going to turn a hand over by the way can you see the mess on this client's hand she'd been out covered in makeup all over her hands didn't want her to scrub her hands before I did a nail because that's going to stop the acrylic adhering you want to see how I get it off wait till the end of this video it's magic stuff that I'm going to use Right now, I am debulking the nail. The reason I'm doing this is I want that smile line to be nice and crisp and I want the whole acrylic to be a nice flat edge as if I was colour blocking. I want it to be flat because the way that I work is after you've put the reverse method, well, when you put the reverse method down and you put the colour on the tip or the white on the tip, here I am turning the hand over again making sure that I get that nice flush edge. I then just pull the coloured acrylic up over the smile line and then I use my file to reveal the crisp smile line. But in doing that, I'm filing it to shape. If I hadn't got rid of the top layer of bulk, that smile line might not have been crisp on the layers underneath the top layer. And that would mean that when I filed it to shape, I could lose the smile line. So I just take off some of the bulk so again, this hand is covered in makeup. This is what happens when you go out drinking and you wake up in the morning hungover and you come to your nail technician. So as you can see, I've favored my small brush again and I'm pulling that color up and over that smile line and I'm just gonna push it into shape and then once it's on and set, I'm gonna refile it all with my file. And to do that, I'm just gonna shape the nail like I would normally. And by shaping it normally with my file, it's going to reveal the smile line the way that I want it to look. So it doesn't matter if you can see just blobby acrylic all over that smile line, because once you've filed it to shape, you're just going to be able to see it crystal clear and it's going to look lovely. I'm telling you that because I didn't get it on camera. I did get it on camera, but my table was rocking that much when I was filing that you wouldn't have been able to make out what I was doing. So you're just going to file it to shape like you normally do 
Now we're coming on to the glitter encapsulation and what I'm doing is I have a very small wet bead of acrylic on my brush. I dip it into the glitter and then keeping it wet means I can move that glitter around nice and easy. Build it in stages just to make sure that there's a nice even coverage but I don't want to make it too thick which is why I'm working wet with it because I need to encapsulate that glitter otherwise it will just come off. This is a diamond glitters glitter and it's one of the ice cream collection and I can't remember the name of it, it's strawberry something and I'll leave a link to it in the comments, in the description section sorry um, and it's a mini because she has two sizes, one is obviously chunky and this is a mini one so it's quite fine glitter and when you are using a full glitter encapsulated nail it is helpful to use a smaller glitter underneath a chunky glitter when you do it so that you get a nice flush cuticle area however on this one we're doing stamping so i'm not putting any chunky glitter over it if you feel that some of the glitter hasn't covered properly while that acrylic is still wet you can dip your brush your wet brush back into the glitter and pat it on just to fill in any parts where you feel it's uneven forgot to mention that the acrylic that I'm using is clear if I was using color you're not gonna see that glitter through it so now I'm doing the glittery swirly thing and I'm using the same method I've already put glitter on the accent nail on the other hand and I've come back to the hand that I've just been working on small wet beads of clear acrylic dipped into that glitter painting it on I'm not so bothered about the overall shape when I first paint it on because I can make the shape better when I push it with the edge of my brush. Um, as you can see, I'm sort of doing that now. But also, I'm making sure that I keep it nice and flat on the nail. I'm pushing it down nice and flat because I don't want to create bulk. And now I'm putting Sugar Diamond over the ombre nail. And I'm starting in the middle, not the cuticle area. And I'm going to pull it down over that pink. As I'm working on it, I do realise that you can't really see the pink. So I take some of that acrylic off with my brush on the tip. And then I blend it down again. And then I do the cuticle area to shape. So once you've done an ombre, you want, you're going to know that the key is getting a nice blend. And I learnt um, a new skill this week from Kirsty Meekin. And that is to add a ghosting layer and I didn't think about it, I don't know why I didn't think about it. And it's when you've done your two colours, you then go in with the first colour and this would be, in this case, a Simply Stella. And you're going to get a very thin layer over the top and it's just going to help to create that blend and the optical illusion that it's a really, really good ombre. So that's what I'm doing now. And she called it a ghosting layer so I'm going to use that term myself and I'm just applying the ghosting layer. And now it's time to encapsulate that glitter. And the reason we're doing this is one, to create the structure because we want we need structure for any nail. We need an apex. The other is because we want to cover that glitter in clear acrylic so it doesn't come off. So I didn't include the video of me putting some capping over the ombre and over the smile line nails because I deleted it because it was on the same video as the filing. Like I said earlier, I knocked the camera a lot. Now with French, you might be using car powders. So Glam and Glitz, I want a cap. And you want to cap any ombre nail as well because you want to protect the blend. But if you were doing a set of French nails and you were using all core powders, you don't need to cap because you don't need to protect it because it is strong itself. In that case, you're going to create the structure from those, um, from those powders. Okay, so now I'm stamping and I'm using Moyu London. I have my stamping plate prepped 
I have put on the white polish. I've scraped it down with the card that comes from Moya London. I've used a rolling motion to pick up that polish and I've then pressed it onto the nail and I'm repeating that on the other hand making sure that I clean the plate in between with acetone and your stamper with a lint-free roller. Top coat time. You can see those smile lines now after I filed. So on the stamped nail what I should have done before I top coated was get rid of any of those stringy bits on the side otherwise the top coat's not going to sit flush. So I'm going to do that in a minute with a curette and then I'm going to top coat the rest of them and I do the fingers, cure them, do the other hand the fingers, cure them and then I do the thumb separately to make sure that it's cured all the way around the thumb because sometimes it doesn't actually catch the side of the thumb with a UV light and it can stay sticky. So again look you can see the smile line and you can also see where I've tried to get a nice round appearance of that cuticle. So this time I'm going to get rid of the stringy bits before a top coat um, and then I'm going to come in and top coat this hand. I'm just going to remove the polish from my client's fingers using acetone. Now I am going to clean my client's hands for her and I am using Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse. It's an oil based cleanser and oil attracts the oil in the makeup and it pulls it out of the pores so I work in circular motions into the skin and it, I'm going to then get her to wash her hands and it's going to emulsify and it's going to wash all of that makeup off. You can use it on your skin, on your face, it's suitable for any skin type. I did train with this when I trained to be a beauty therapist so it's just my favourite. and. I'm working, like I said, in circular motions. It does lipstick stains, it does foundation stains, it does eye makeup, but you're not going to put it on your eyes, but it'll do any smudges underneath. And you can see here the difference in her hands. Let's put the light on a bit better. It's gone, totally gone. I'll get to turn her hand over for you. And that purple stain that hasn't quite come off, uh, that's lipstick, so it has stains as well, but it's a lot better than it was before. So there you go, and a quick look at her other hand as well. Just to show you, there you go, stunning. Well, your hands look like different hands anyway. And there you have the finished set. So I hope you liked the video. I hope you want to recreate it. And I hope you liked the little demonstration of the pre-cleanse at the end. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.